And then for today, we will do, we'll start with Inventor. We'll, we'll kind of do the basics, the very basics today. Then we'll expand on those on Thursday. Tuesday, we have the exam. And then on uh, next Thursday, we're going to go full out 3D um, drawings. Um, but we'll start more or less 2D. We'll expand them to 3D for a little bit, but we won't do anything fancy in 3D. So to do that, let me share my screen. And this is where, let's just do the entire screen. And this is where uh, using the computer, having this all online is actually helpful because it's really easy to work with. One second, just need to, it's acting extremely weird. One second, I'm sorry. It doesn't want me to, doesn't want to allow me to switch. This is very annoying. The picture gallery, when it goes from one one screen to the other, does not want to re, uh, resize for some reason. Oh, well. Let this be what it is. Why is this so unwieldy? Let's get back on the main one. There we go. What is that on this thing? Not that anybody has their camera on anyway. Oh, no. We have one camera. So people, cameras on, please. All right. So this is what our system looks like. Um, this is the opening screen that you'll see when you log in. Um, now, of course, once you've done more stuff, right, you'll have a whole bunch of options here, like, you know, recent things to click on. But in general, that's what it looks like. And so when we start, we will want to go to, well, if we're working on something we've already started, right? Then we can, we've saved it, we can open it, but otherwise we'll go to new. And if we click on the little arrow next to it, then we'll see that we have four different options, basically, of what to do. There is the park, which is .ipt. There's an assembly, which is IAM. And then the drawing is DWG. And then the presentation is IPM. Right? And those are the four things that we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. Right? So basically, we will draw parts. That's kind of exactly what it sounds like. Then we can take multiple parts and build them together to something uh, more elaborate. Right? That's going to be what we do in the project. Right? We'll build all the parts for our truck, and then we're going to assemble them. Of course, as soon as we do drawings, we will want to oh, as soon as we have parts, we'll want to have drawings. And then presentation is a whole other thing that we'll do at the very end. But we will start for the next couple of weeks. It's just going to be parts. So if I click on that, then it should open up with another option box somewhere. Oh, it went straight in. It's not exactly what I wanted. So let's go one step back. Let's get rid of this one. Let's just hit the normal new. This is running a little slower than I would want to. Interesting. I had that before. I wonder what the issue is. I think it's an issue with having two screens open at the same time. Right. So I think what it's doing is it's now has a box open somewhere. And it's not allowing me to click anything else. All right. Maybe can I trick it to come up here? Why is it not allowing me to go into the uh, center one? All right. This is one of those great things that happens when they switch to a new version. Um, a version that I'm not as familiar with yet. So usually what, what should happen is that when you hit new, it opens up a whole another menu and I'm sure that it's doing it somewhere, just not where we can see it. Let's try this video here, Let's minimize. Interesting. 
Let's think about this for a second. Why don't you close it and open the whole thing again? Oh, it's like because I'm, I'm getting back in. It's just like when I hit, maybe if I do the templates, it will allow me. I, I can get to where you go, but there, there's a, a, a window in between that should be showing that it's not, not showing me. That's not doing it there either. Well, let's do this. Thing. Let me unshare my screen for a second. And I will do, we'll switch this that I only had one screen. Hopefully that helps. All right, let's see if that was, if that does the trick. Uh, Sorry for the slow start of the day. I guess you can get to relax a little bit. There we go. Now let's see if it allows us to do that. It becomes very crowded. We'll figure out until next time. There we go. So I don't know why this doesn't pop up. So you can now see the little the little new window here, right? Um, so in this window, you'll see that there is basically four big parts, right? There's where you can create parts, where you can do assemblies, drawings, and then presentations all the way down here. You'll see that we have all kinds of different options for our parts. We were going to be using standard millimeters. Make sure that you're not using sheet metal millimeters, right? It has to be standard millimeters because if you use sheet metal, then there's some options in there and your, your interface will look different and it will look strange. Um, so that's the standard millimeter. Now, okay. if we want to do inches, yes? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so I was looking through the book, just yeah. so you, and, and and since like some of the problems say that they're in inches, uh -huh. it says that we should use the standard inches like PT. So I was exactly. wondering if we have to do that. So if you do anything in inches, you just go to the English one up here, right? So you have within, like when you open this up the first time, it probably just looked like this, where it's templates, and then that one there. And if you want to use inches, you click on English, and then you'll see that your options here change. If I switch between English and metric, I get different templates. And so if you want to do something in inches, you just click on standard inch. OK, thank you. And for metric, we get here. But let's go to metric for now. And then we'll say create. And then it will do just that, right? So we can now see we have our nice little environment here that we can use. Let's put you guys down here, maybe. Um, okay, what do we see, right? So we have our big white screen where we're drawing. Um, if you're starting out, you might have a gray screen instead. And we can talk about this later, how to switch to a different background color. Um, it's just for me, because I'm doing a lot of copy and paste out of here, it's nicer to have the white background. Um, you will see you have all kinds of options up here. Um, right, you have the different, this is somewhat uncomfortable with uh, all these extra tools. All right, so what the main thing that we have here is we have all these different things that we can do. You can see these are all kind of related to three-dimensional things. Um, but before we can do three-dimensional things, we'll have to do sketches and you'll see those are things that are that are kind of more more straightforward but we'll get there in a second the other things that we'll see is that on the right hand side you have kind of this navigation thing where you can pan you can zoom you can also zoom just with uh with the wheel on your on your mouse um the other thing is that you'll see you have this cube sitting on the right hand corner right hand top corner and that shows you the view of your of your drawing Right, so in this case, we're getting, we're looking at the front view. If we want to look at an isometric one, then we click on this little house. Right, if we click on the little house, this goes home, and so this will always yeah, you know, orient yourself to be kind of looking at the standard isometric view that that we've seen. Right, where the front, the right, and the top 
are the things that we see. Well, you can you can choose whatever, right? I can say, well, I want to look at the top. I want to look from this corner. I want to look from that edge. Of course, now we don't really see anything moving, but um, because there's nothing yet. But let's let's go back to here. So that's that's kind of your navigation cube. It's going to be very important. And then on the left side, you have this uh, panel here that's called model, and it basically has everything in it that you need for your part. Right? You'll see right now there's really nothing in there because we don't have it, we haven't done anything yet. Um, the only thing that's really in here at the moment is is the origin, right? So you could click on the different planes that you have, um, but we don't need them quite yet. All right, so now we are ready to actually draw something. Ooh, I wonder why I zoomed out so much. Why is it there? We go. So now if we actually want to do something, right, we have to do a sketch. And so we can do that by hitting the button up here, start sketch, right? And it will automatically then start asking us, well, where do you want to sketch, right? You have to decide what plane you want to use. And the only things we have right now are the three main uh, uh, coordinate planes that we have, right? We have um, X, Y, uh, X, Z, Y, Z, and, uh, and uh, yeah, those are the three, right? Um, because there's nothing else to draw on yet. So we have to choose one of these. So let's do maybe the one that's lying at the bottom. So if we click on that, then you'll see that it zoomed onto the top view, right? Because we said we want to draw on that, that bottom one. And so also you see now that it automatically switched you from the 3D model tab to the sketch model tab. And now you have all these different options here to do sketches with. Now for all of these, you will see if you kind of rest your mouse on the top one, right? It will give you an explanation of what this does, right? This one's relatively straightforward. It's drawing, drawing a line. Um, for some of the more complicated ones, right? It will tell you how to, how to use these. The other thing that you'll see is that a lot of them have the little the little button underneath, right? This little triangle. So I can click on that, and that gives me a whole bunch of different options of what type of lines we can draw in this case, right? This, for lines, we usually stick to straight lines, but we could do all kinds of different curved lines too if we wanted to. For circles, right, we mainly are going to be using circles where we choose the, uh, the center and then give the radius, but we could also have like, you know, a set of lines that we want to make sure that the circle fits into them. And then we can do ellipses as well. Arcs are going to be important too. The standard arc that we have is that we choose the, uh, the, um, the one end, then the other end, and then kind of use the, the third, the middle point to choose the radius. But there's other arcs that we can use. The one that really has a lot of options is the rectangle. The standard rectangle is to choose the two corner points, but we have other ones as well. We can have these slots, right, that have kind of a, a curve on both ends, and then we can have polygons. And don't worry about them, right? It's all nice and written out here, so they're going to be easy to find uh, once you need them. But let's start with some simple lines. Let's say you just want to have a line. As soon as you click on line, you'll see that you get that little yellow dot on your cursor and you get something that tells you exactly where you are, right? So you can now click anywhere you want to, and then click again, and there you have a line, right? Very, very straightforward to do. Now, it will want to continue drawing lines, right? It will do that as long as you left click over and over. It does that if you want to be done drawing lines, you can click uh, with your right click, and then say, OK, and, and there you have your line, right? You could also, if you do draw a couple, right, and you're done, you can also hit the escape key. And that is the same as, uh, you know, right clicking and, and typing it or using OK. Right, so it's just a faster way of doing that. Anything that you draw, you can say you can highlight and then you can just hit delete on your, on your keyboard to get rid of stuff. Right, so it's real easy. You can also, I should say, you could also right click and then you'll find delete up there. It's a little hard to see in this case. All right, so this is an easy way to, to draw lines. Now, usually we don't want to just randomly draw lines, right? We usually have a reason to do that. Um, and we can take, like, you know, Inventor helps us with a lot of these things, right? So let's say we want to start at the origin, right? And you see if I move my mouse close to the origin, it will snap into the origin, right? And then be kind of a green point. Every time your cursor turns green means 
it snapped to a point, right? This could be an end of a line. This could be the halfway point of a line. This could be the center of a circle, all those kind of things. Any kind of point we can imagine, it will try to click to, right? So if I now do my left click, then I can, I can draw starting from that corner. Now, let's say I want to draw straight upward, right? Then I could just do it like this. You will see that not only does it say zero degrees, um, but it also gives you that little, little symbol there, right? That to the line that's above another line. And that just means that in this case, it is exactly horizontal, right? Now, if I wanted to say, I want to draw exactly 10, right? Then I could, of course, move my mouse up and down until I find exactly 10, but that's gonna be very difficult. Um, but you'll see that that number is highlighted in blue. So what you can do, you can just type on your keyboard one, zero, and then you have 10. Now, if you want to have a different angle, then you can hit the tab key. And so that kind of lets you switch between those two things. Now, if you say, okay, 10 millimeters is what I want to have and a degree of zero is what I want to have, then you just hit the okay button, right? And it automatically draws that line, right? Now, if I wanted to draw another line in this direction, right? Maybe that's supposed to be, well, let's do eight because that's close to what we have. I can do eight, right? And it automatically puts on there that those are the lengths. Now you'll see another couple things. Maybe we'll just end our line here for the for the second, right? So if I if I click on this line again, right, then you'll see that at this corner, this new symbol appears. And this symbol means that there's a constraint between these two lines, right? So it will want to keep these two lines at a right angle. Now, if you did anything with this top line here to change its angle, it will automatically change the other line as well, right? So there's there's constraints built in. If I click on the other line, then we'll see that it says it has a constraint with this one and it has the constraint that it's supposed to be, be uh, vertical, right? That's kind of the sign that it's either vertical or horizontal. All right, so this is kind of how we, how we do those. And we can get rid of these if we want to. We can right click and somewhere in there is delete the constraints if we want to. Sometimes we'll, we'll need to do that, but we'll see uh, what we do. All right, so as well as getting lines just straight in, um, you can also tell the line where to start directly if you wanted to, right? So if I have my, my cursor right here and I say like, well, um, I want my line to start, um, let's have it start slightly below the origin somewhere, right? So I can say, well, maybe I want to have, again, if I hit the tab key, I can get in the blue region. And then I say, well, I want the, have it start at x minus three and y equals zero, All right? So then it starts right there. Maybe I wanna have a nice line that goes up here, All right? So it connects those two perfectly well. I can also say that, well, I want to draw a line here that has a certain, a certain angle, right? Maybe I wanna have 125 degrees, All right? So then now I can, create my line, it's gonna hold it at 125 and I can choose it however long I wanna choose it. So let's choose it just somewhere here and you can see that it now chose to do kind of this, this angle up here. Now, if we wanna close this off, let's do another line that starts at the end point here and we want to have it uh, horizontal, right? Again, that little, little sign appears and the 90 degree angle appears. And we can draw that in, we can say we're good, all right? So now we have all these lines here together. But of course, these lines look a little bit strange now because they kind of intersect and then are, are useless. So what we can do is we can use one of the other commands that we have up here. And that is the trim command, all right? So if I hover over any line, then it will try to cut away the line until the next intersection with something else. And so if I click it here, it will erase all the stuff that's dotted. If I go over here, it kind of erases everything that was dotted, everything was dotted here, and now I have kind of a, a nice a nice shape. Any questions so far? All right, basically point and click, point and click, All right? It's really nice and easy. Now, if we are done with our little drawing, our 2D drawing, then we can go up here and go to finish sketch. Now, this is important. You always have to finish your sketch before you do anything else. 
right? If you wanted to do anything in three dimensions, you first have to finish the sketch. If you want to do something like um, um, save the file, right? You have to finish your sketch. So we can just do finish sketch. And then we see now again, we're, we're going into our standard isometric view of the sketch, right? If I do just the top view, that it would be exactly what I had seen before. This little hand thing lets you pan around, right? Again, you can get away from that by hitting the escape key. There we go. All right, so now this is pretty straightforward, right? And now you will see that in our little model uh, uh, tab here, it now shows up that we have this little extra sketch, right? Sketch one is that what here, what we have here. We right click on that sketch. There's a, th a couple things that we can do. The first one that we can do is we can we can basically hide it, right? There's visibility, and then there's a little check mark in front of it. If I click on that, then it disappears from my from my kind of drawing screen here. But it's still there, right? It's not it's not gone. Um, if I hover over it, I can see it again, and you can see it's kind of grayed out in its uh, shape there. So let's get that back. We can see it again. We don't want to see the dimension stuff on there. We can get rid of the dimensions. Those are all things we can do. There it's back. Uh, another thing that we can do is, well, before that, maybe just like anything else in, in kind of in, in Windows, any kind of Windows Explorer kind of stuff, is if you kind of click on it slowly, right, then you could you can re you can rename it, right? You can give it some other name. You can say triangle, for instance, right? And then you can reference that as a triangle. If you have a whole bunch of sketches floating around, sometimes it's good to rename stuff to kind of make it easier to find. It. Now, what can we do with this kind of a triangle? Well, the main thing that we'll do, at least for the first couple of classes, we're just going to, we're going to call, we're going to uh, pull them into the third dimension, right? Right now, we just have a flat drawing, right? If I look from the front, for instance, I won't be able to see anything, right? It's just a line. Um, but we can call uh, we can do what we call extrude. And that basically takes a two dimensional shape and it pulls it uh, uh, in a normal direction, like upward or downward. And when we do that, then it pops out this nice little little wizard that allows us um, to to uh, extrude it. Now we only have a single option here for a shape that can be extruded. Right? We only had that that triangle kind of here outlined. So it grabs that automatically. If you have multiple ones, then we'd have to choose one of them to do this. Um, and then the main things down here that we see are how we want the extrude, right? If we just want to go up, we could go down as well. We can go halfway up, halfway down. Or here we'd have to say, well, we got to go this much up and this much down. Well, let's just go, go up for now. And then it will ask us how far we want to do it. So maybe we'll just do it two millimeters instead. And there we go, right? And so if we hit OK, then now we have this kind of more, more solid block sitting in front of us. And again, we can we can do that in any way we want to. Now, what you'll see in your in your model uh, pane over here is that your sketch has disappeared, right? You don't see your sketch anymore. And so in the language of Inventor, it's basically the, the, this three-dimensional object has consumed your sketch, right? So it's no longer right there. But if you click on the little plus here next to the extrusion, then you can see that your, your drawing is still there, your sketch is still there, right? So you could use this to do all kinds of stuff. Now, one important thing that we can do here is that we can go and do edit sketch. Yes, Antonio, what's the question? Yes, uh, once like we already like started the program, is there a way to change the measurement, like for example, from inches to millimeters or does it need to be in the in the beginning? Um, it is easier to do at the beginning. Um, let's see, I need to get rid of some, that paint up here. You can also do it, this is one of the things where they, they played around with, uh, with the setup. You can do it in, so if you go to tools, right up here on the, where we were in, in 3D model, if you go over to tools and you go to document settings, and sorry, I have to get rid of my, my, uh, my pages in the way. And then you go to units, 
then you should be able to change it to something else. Okay. I'm going to stick with millimeters because that worked. All right. All right. Let's go back to our 3D model. That's where we were. So let's say we've are we, we've noticed that oh this this looks all good, but uh, maybe something in our drawing was not quite and our sketch was not quite correct. So we can go onto the triangle, and we can do edit sketch. And so basically, what it does is opens that same sketch again. Or maybe one little one little trick to do is whenever you're Whenever, whenever you're, you're, you know, let's say we're, we're zoomed into some particular part. If I click onto my little box here, in whatever view I have, it will zoom out to fit everything onto the screen. All right, so that's a little, little hint. All right, so let's say we decided that um, this length here was not supposed to be eight, right? Maybe it was supposed to be seven. So if we want to change it, we can go to dimension right up here in our in our sketch uh, tab and then we click on the number and it will open up another little box and then we can just change it we don't have to uh, add the seven and uh, the millimeters it will it will know it's millimeters and so we changed it now you will see that it changed the length of this line but it also changed the length of this line right because we said, the angle between these two is supposed to be 125. So if I uh, move that down, that this and the, you know, the ends were connected. So that means that this line has to be shorter to keep everything uh, otherwise in the same shape. Now, whenever you change a dimension, you have to be a little bit careful because Inventor tries to keep the shape intact as far as it decides what the shape should be. So sometimes you change a dimension somewhere and everything in your entire drawing, in your entire sketch changes, right? Just because the constraints that you had kind of means that this has to stay in the same relationship and that, and all of a sudden your, your, your whole thing looks very different. So if that happens, you just hit, there's a little back button up here, just like with everything else, and you back that up and then you try and get rid of some constraints uh, to, to do that. But if that happens, just let me know and we'll, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll test that out. All right, so now I've changed my, my sketch, right? I made this to a seven. So if I go back, if I say finish sketch, then you will see that it automatically takes that into account on my on my extrusion, right? It shortened this up, so it's not a big change. So it's not that visible. Now, not only can I change what, my, what I did in my sketch, I can also right click on the extrusion and say edit feature. In this case, the feature is the extrusion. So I go back into this and I can say, well, really what I wanted to have was four. And I go in and it, and it creates uh, it at four. All right, so these are the, the things that we can do. Now, let's say we want to do a little more than this, right? Maybe we decide that we want to cut a nice circular hole into, the, uh, into, this, into this part here, All right? So what we can do, there's many different ways we can start this. We can do... We can hit start sketch and then we'll get this little symbol. And then now we can choose any of these planes that we have, right? The back ones that we can't see right now. But if I flip them over, all right, I can also draw on the bottom or these back ones, whichever one I want to. All right, well, let's make it easy and draw on the top. So I, I can choose it, just click on there, and it will now draw onto this line. So the sketch is going to be a different plane than our original plane, right? Our original plane, again, if I look at, at the side here, I was drawing on, on this bottom plane. Let's scroll all over, right? I was kind of drawing on this bottom plane right now, but now my plane is up here, right? Because I'm now, whatever, four millimeters above the other plane. And now let's draw a circle onto this plane. Let's go back in the top view so it's a little easier to see. Let's draw a circle, right? So to draw a circle, the easiest way to do it is you just decide where your center point is, and then you can move your mouse, and that tells you what the diameter is. This is always the diameter. Let's be careful. And just like with a line, right, you can also just type in the length that you want to have. So let's say we want to have uh, our, our circle is supposed to have a diameter of 5, so I just 
hit five on the keyboard and then enter and then there I have I have my circle. All right, let's say finish. And so now I have my circle right here. Right, drawn on it. It's not a hole yet, it's just a circle drawn on it. Right. If I do again, if I do the right side view, I'm not even gonna see it. But what I can do is I can go back to extrude. And now instead of going upward, I can go downward. And you will see that one when I switch between up and down, look down here, right? It will switch from one to the other. This first one here is a join, right? So basically it will join whatever new is to the already existing part. If I do this here, that means it's gonna take it out. So basically it's a cut. Now, if I'm going upward and cutting, there's nothing there, right? Because there's already nothing. But if I'm going downward and cutting, then it creates a hole. And we'll see there's another way to, to create holes, but let's stick with the simple one for now. Right, and so if I go to the top view, then now I can see through, right? That's where my hole is. Questions so far? All right, so let's say we didn't like that hole the way it is. So what do we do, right? Again, we can right click on our sketch and do edit sketch. We'll be doing that a lot. Right? That's something that's gonna happen all the time. So maybe we decide that it's not the right size, right? Maybe that was, again, we hit sketch first and then we say, well, this should have been four and we have it there. And maybe, maybe we don't like where it is, right? So we can use dimensions for the same thing. So we can hit, we can, we're still in dimension, right? Dimension mode. So we can hit this line down here and then we can hit the center of the circle, right? And it will draw this little thing in. Doesn't matter if we put it outside or inside, this is just, these are never gonna show up anymore. Right? They're just for you to tell us what to do. So let's put it here. And let's say we want that to be four, right? So that's moves it to be there. And we can do the same thing in the other direction. Now, when you're dimensioning the center point of a circle like this, it's always easier to first click on the other thing and then the circle. Because if you hit the circle first, it often thinks that you want to do the diameter of the circle. So let's do click here and there. And then maybe let's say that's five as well. All right, so we moved it around. Now, if I hit my little finished sketch, right, then it moved that hole and made, changed the size, right? That gets incorporated into whatever you do beforehand. All right, let's see what else we want to do. We want to do some more sketch stuff. Let's go and do another sketch on this, on this plane. Or maybe let's do one over here. Now what we can what we can do is, right, we say if we want to do a sketch, we can hit this start 2D sketch thing. The other thing that you can do is you can right click, you can hover over any of these planes and then do right click. If you do that, you'll see there's a whole bunch of options that come out. One of them is new sketch. That's usually how I, I start my sketches. Very important though that it has to be a flat surface, right? I can't do a sketch on the inside of a circle. It has to be flat. So if I hit here, I hit new sketch and our sketch comes back. Let's scroll this over a little bit and maybe now let's do a rectangle. All right, so we have our, our options for our rectangle. Again, we can just choose, uh, we can point and click or we can put the numbers in. So maybe we wanna have one that's four and then tab to go to the other one and 1 1.5 and enter. And there's my, my little uh, rectangle. Now with this rectangle, again, I can dimension it, right? Maybe I said, well, maybe this really was supposed to be 1.75. Oh, I'll put that in, right? It will keep it as a shape, everything good. I can also tell it where I want to have it, right? I can say, I want to have this distance be maybe exactly one. And maybe I want to have the distance from this end to that end be six. All right, so I can tell exactly where I want to do it. So I can say, well, finish sketch, and then I have it there. Now I could, maybe I'll do another hole. All right, I do a cut. Do I cut all the way through? Let's make something bigger. All right, you can always put a really big number here, 
um, because it's just going to cut all the way through, right? If there's air there, it doesn't matter. I can put 100 there, right? As long as there's nothing else there to cut, it will kind of, it just kind of cuts that. And so now if I look from here, right, I have my perfect cut through my little, my little, uh, my little part here, whatever this is, right? So this is how I could slowly but surely create a more complex thing. Oh, before we before we continue, one more thing. Let's go into our again. Let's get the sketch back. Let's do edit sketch. One more thing I want to just show you here, right? So we've talked about line circles. I should do arcs. So well, we'll do that next. Before we get the arcs, let's do what we call a fillet. Right? A fillet is something that we where we either round off the corner on the outside or we round off the corner on the inside. Now for the outside, we, we want to round off sharp corners so that they're not sharp, so we don't cut ourselves and all those kind of things. On the inside, we want to take away sharp corners to make them stronger, right? So because then there's less stress concentration on them. But just from a drawing standpoint, if I want to create a fillet, I hit my little fillet thing and then it will come up with a fillet diameter. Right, so if I say, well, I want to have a fillet right here, two millimeters is going to be too big, let's do 0.5. And I choose the two lines that I want to create the fillet with, and it creates my fillet. You know, if I click back out, then I see now it's rounded off my corner. And so I could say finish sketch, and then you can see it automatically propagates that in. Right, so now I have that, that filled out sketch all the way through. All right, so that would be a the way to do a fillet and then the last thing let's do a an arc and then we'll, we'll do some examples so again if i just right click on this on the surface i can do a new sketch so let's do a new sketch on there and let's do an arc like remember that for my arc i choose the the first point and the last point and then a, a diameter right so maybe i'll choose this point here and the halfway point here, right? And then I can choose whatever diameter I want to do. I'm just going to create a circle that basically fits on it. All right, so maybe let's do a diameter of two. All right, and then if I wanted to go and extrude this, all right, I go out and then let's say we hit extrude. Oh, it's even allowing me to do that. That's a surprise. If yeah, rid of that issue. Often you have to close it off, but they fix that off. All right, good. Let's do the same as we had before. Let's go downward, All right? And so it kind of adds that uh, to it. Now you'll notice that if I add something to my existing part here, right? It will always fully connect. So it does not matter if this, how we add this, this piece of material to the overall part, it will just become part of of what's there, right? So we don't have to have to worry about any of this. All right. Any questions so far? If not, then let's try and do another little or an example, a simple one at first. Make this a little smaller. Hang this on one screen. It's a little, a little dicey. Hard as I want to hold that. Let's stop sharing for one second here because that's makes it more difficult to move stuff around here. All right. Very strange. And let's let's just share the telephone screen clear screen. So let's get back this part. Let's 
smaller. All right. So this works a little better on the bigger screen, but we'll have to do have to then do with what we have. All right, so let's say we're here and let's say we want to draw this little shape right here. So just move that over, make this a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, so let's say we want to draw this very simple shape. In this case, it says, just gives a thickness, right? There's nothing special in the, in the third dimension. So once we have that sketch, we're good. All right, so that means we need to make a new sketch. Right. So again, we hit our little we hit our little leaf up here. Now, in this case, just because of the numbers and the way they're written, right, we know that has to be inches. So let's go to standard inches and do create, and then we have our new part. Right, where we we don't see anything anymore. Now, if we could see down here now. All right, we need to change this window. It's too big. Why can I not move this window? It's very strange. There we go. That way you can see, see the bottom at least a little bit. It's a little smaller. There, right? So now you can see down here that we have our two parts, right? So this is the, the new part that we're working on right now. So let's let's start our part, right? So we have this part. Again, we have to uh, start a new sketch. Doesn't matter what plane you choose. Let's choose this plane. And now we have to draw this entire thing, right? So of course, these are gonna be all nice straight lines. So let's just start at the center. And let's say we go we go to the right first, right? So we can just make sure that our line is at 90 degrees and then type in six and that draws our line. Remember that we can click on our button here and we'll zoom out to have the entire thing in there. Now the next one will be go straight up for one. Then we'd have to go, let's see, it says up here 1.5, so we're all 1.5. So we go inward by 1.5. Then we would go this line right here, right? That's also goes up 1.5. Right? Just make sure that you are at each of these are at 90 uh, degrees, because right? these are all straight, uh, all, all right corners. And then now we can either type in 1.5 or we can just you can kind of see that once I get to 1.5, it adds that extra line. So we can just say, well, we want to have that the same length, 1.5. And then we'd have to go up another. So this is 3.5, but total, this is one, 2.5. So another, another one upward. Let's click the button here again, so we can zoom out. And then we want to go all the way. This part is 1.5. How far is this? Well, we know that overall this length is six and this is two, this is 3.5. So this should be 2.5, right? So sometimes you'll notice there's gonna be a little bit of uh, extra stuff going on. Now we are not given what this angle is. We're only given what the overall look is. So what we can do is we can say like, well, we're just going to draw a line in here, right? We're not going to give it, we're not going to tell what the length is. We're not going to tell what the angle is. We're just going to draw it in, right? That's fine. But now we say, well, from here, we know we have to go straight up. And we know that we're going to go straight up to the same level as this one, right? The height of here, height there is the same. So I can go straight up and, and we'll straight up. There we go, right? And we can say we want to have it aligned with another line. So we say, that's good, right there. And then we can finish this off, right? We can finish off here. Again, a straight line all the way down. And our system is in place. Now you'll notice that, of course, this line is not the right length, right? 
If I go in and say dimension and click this line, it is not 1.5 inches, it's two point something. So we can put 1.5 in there. And then we see that that has moved, right? So this is now 1.5, but of course this part is not the right distance yet. So we'll have to do that as well. So we'll do this corner and this edge, and that's supposed to be 1.75. And with that, we have our system in place, right? We don't know what this angle is, or well, we can if we wanted to, right? We can see what this angle would be. 138.81, I'm pretty sure that's not exact, right? So it uh, doesn't really help us to have that. But we know that these lengths are all correct. Um, so this is exactly what this looks like. So with that, I can say finish sketch. And let's hit our little house again to zoom out. And there we have our sketch in, in, in that one plane. So we want to extrude it. It says thickness of one. Then we'll say, OK. And with that, we would be done. All right? That's how we create our parts. Now, of course, if this were a more important part, we may want it to keep it. Right? So we can go to the little Save button here. We have not change its name yet, then we can just hit that and we'll go to the save as uh, part. Your exam questions right here. Put this into, into temp for now. So we can call this example one. And then I can't see the bottom here, let's see. And now you'll also see that on the bottom here, it now changes the, uh, the part name. Right. So if we have 10 parts open, they're not just part one, two, three, four, five. They're like actually what the names are. So we can switch between them more easily. Right. They're, they're all still open. This would be our relatively straightforward part to draw. Right? We only have one sketch and one extrusion. Makes it nice and easy to do. Are there any questions? So for the examples that I want you to do later, I will want, for each of the things that you do, I will want to have two things. I will want to have this IPT that you saved, and I will want to have a screenshot so I can look at what it looks like, um, right? Because often, basically, I'm going to look at the screenshot. The screenshot looks fine, then I'm not going to go into detail into the IPT. But if the if I if it looks come out strange, then I have the IPT to look exactly um, what what was looking strange, and maybe it's just looking strange, right? Maybe it's correct, but just the angle that you took the, uh, the screenshot of is, is maybe strange. I have a question. Yes. Um, if, if there's an option to like export it to a PDF, would you rather a screenshot? Um, let's see what the PDF looks like if we export a PDF. I mean, you can export it to a to There's like two options, like PDF and 3D PDF, so I, I don't know. Yeah, the three D PDF is I'm not going to be able to read afterwards. So, if you want to do it straight to PDF, let's go into here. Let's say example one PDF again. I have to move my bars here out of the way and do save. And then let's see. And example PDF. That yeah, looks good too. We can do that as well. Great. Just again, something that I can read. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, Professor, could, could you show again, like, um, is that my display at the beginning doesn't really show up um, the option of changing from, from millimeters to three inches? I don't know why. I, I, I think it's, it's got to do with uh, the libraries that are not like fully uh, downloaded. So could you show well, again you, like- if you, do, uh, if you go to new up here, right? You, you should, it should look at the very least there should be some templates there, right? And that, that's how you should be able to find um, what you have. Now, if, again, if you did not do it, then you could go in to tools and then, and now my screen is too small to fit this all in there. 
you can go to document settings and then to units. All right, so now it's inch and we could change it to, to something else. Was that what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Any other question about our little part here? No? All right, then let's try something that looks a little more difficult. Let's try this little guy here. So let's go back in. Oh, I have to give more space. And there we go. That's all it gets. And we will, of course, want to make a new part. Now, this is all in millimeters. So let's go to metric again, standard. Really carefully that you don't do the sheet metal uh, millimeters, right? Standard millimeters. And create. And we have our black blank canvas to play. Now there's for this one, there's several different ways that we can do this. Um, one thing that you will notice here, maybe I can zoom in on this a little bit more. All right, so we have a couple different ways of doing this. We can just go straight around and do everything, or um, we can take into account that this has a symmetry axis. Right? It says there that the object is symmetrical about the center line. Um, but maybe we'll just go straight ahead and, and do it for the entire thing, and then I'll, I'll show you how to do it slightly easier with the... Uh, using symmetry. All right, so we'll start by doing a sketch. Again, it doesn't really matter which plane we choose. We'll choose this one. And then have to kind of look at this and think about, well, what is what is the overall shape of this, right? And for us, if you think about the entire piece, right, then you can think about this overall shape being this, this outline of a rectangle. So we can start there. We can say this is a rectangle that has a height of 100 and a width of 85. So we'll choose rectangle. We'll choose, we can choose any point, but it's nice to anchor it to the to the uh, to the uh, the center. And so we'll say, so this will be the height, right? If I move this up and down, I can see this is moving faster. The height was supposed to be a hundred. Then I hit the tab key to get to the width, and the width was supposed to be 85. And then enter, and I have my rectangle, hit my little button here to get back to the full view. All right, so this is now my overall shape. Now, of course, that overall shape is not, not what we want to have, where we have all kinds of changes that we want to make in this. So where do you want to start? Well, maybe we can cut out these, what looks to be more or less triangle, uh, rectangles, uh, squares, I mean, right? So this would be 20 and 20, right? So you can see here, this drawing is using all kinds of little shortcuts to, to talk about where stuff is, right? So it says um, that this is a distance of 20 and then there's two slots, right? So it's talking about the slot up here and the slot down there. So there, we know they're both gonna be the same. We're both gonna, basically we're gonna have to cut out a little uh, a square. So what we can do is we can do another rectangle. We can anchor it against this top line here. And we can say that was supposed to be 20 by 20. So let's type 20, hit 20 again, and then there. Now, of course, this is not necessarily where it's supposed to be yet. So we have to use a dimension. So we can tie this line to this line. And in our drawing, it says that's supposed to be 35. Right? It says so right up there. All right. So now, does that mean we have a cut here? No, right? Because we still have this line, so we have to get rid of that line. To get rid of that line, we once again use the, the trim command, right, that I showed you before. If I go in the middle here, you can see that if I put it there, then I can trim away that, that line there. Now, you'll notice that I just trimmed that line, and it's still there. 
Why, why is that line still there, although I just trimmed it? What do you think? Well, it's basically there because I had that line there, right? I, if you think about it down here, I have this line down here. And I've now added the square on top of it. So I just took away basically the, the line of the square, but the line of my big rectangle is there. So if I do it again, it doesn't like it. So let's just get, we can just delete it straight out, straight away. We'll just hit delete and there it goes, right? And now I have, have my cut. So I'll do the same thing down here, grab it there, 20 by 20. And the distance to that edge is supposed to be 35. There we go. And again, do our, do our trim and our delete. No, we don't have that one. We can, we can move directly. That one we have to trim. There we go. Right, so now we have that. We have this cup. And we have this cut. That means maybe next we want to do our, our circular cut right here. Now we can see from this one that the center of the circle lies right on this kind of on this line right here. So what we can do is we just draw a full circle and then we'll, we'll do some more trimming. Now again, the nice thing is that this is on the halfway point, right? This was 100, this is 50. An inventor will grab the halfway point. All right, so this is the halfway point right here. Now I can draw my circle. Now very, you have to be very careful with these things because there we're no longer dimensioning a circle, right? We're dimensioning an arc. So remember that we said that anytime we have an arc, we're giving the uh, the radius, not the diameter, right? You can see it's R21, which of course means that the diameter for this is going to be 42. All right, so there I have my circle. And then I can go to trim. I can trim away this part of the circle and this part of the outline. And with that, I have my, my cut here. Well, we can do the same thing over on the other side. Scroll over a little bit. All right, so we know that this is at 50. So we can we have to draw kind of our, our part into here. So we can do that, or we can use a slot. And let's, we have different options. We can do center to center of our slot, or we can do the center point. So let's use this one. All right, so this will draw us something that looks like, you now I've drawn my line. And so this is just as an example, right? And then I can do this. So you can see that we would get the same the same shape. So let's do that here. Our slot, again, let's grab the center point. And now it's supposed to go 25 in, as far as I can see, so 25. And then we're supposed to choose the radius as 10, so the diameter 20. And there we have our slot. Now let's use the trim command again, get rid of all this stuff on the outside. And then these parts here. And there we have our cut. All right, what are we missing? We're missing these two holes. And we're missing all these corners. All right, how do we do the holes? Well, the holes are just a circle. Now we could draw the whole thing extruded and then draw the circles and then cut them, or we can just draw the circles in right away. That's up to us. Of course, it's faster if you draw them right away. So let's put a circle somewhere in here. It says down here that the diameter is 12. So there we go. And then let's put them in place. They're supposed to be 15 and 15. So here to there is 15. And from there to there also 15. And then the same thing down here. I was supposed to be 12. And then 
15 minutes. Yeah, just... Fifteen and fifteen. There we go. All right, that looks good. That means the only spot, uh, only spot that's left, or the only thing that's left to do is is these these fillets here, right? And it says that there are four corners and all are R ten. So we can go into fillet. We can say 10 millimeters. And then again, we need to choose the first and the second line and we just can keep on going, right? We kind of previews what it looks like if you look very carefully, right? It kind of previews in, in green. We do it here and we can do it there, there, and there. And then we finish our sketch. Let's zoom out. And there we can see this is exactly what we're trying to do. And then it says that the thickness is eight. So extrude, there's only one shape to extrude, to extrude. And so it says eight and okay. So now if we look from the top, oh, we need to flip it a little bit. Back. There we go. Right, so this is exactly what our what our shape is supposed to look like. Any questions? No? No. Nope. Okay, good. Then well, let's save the sky as well. Let's call this sample two. And then let me open. Yeah, So now I want you to do three sketches for today. So quite a bit of time, so you should be able to get them all done here in class. So this is the first one. You can always find them in your in the inventor book as well, right? So this is problem one dash three. This is in inches. And so you have all these different lines and you have the two circles, given that they're half an inch in diameter and so on and so on, right? And then the thickness is given down here as 0 0.75. This one is in millimeters, um, right? You have this kind of a crown shape, I guess you could say, with three holes in it. And all the dimensions are given, right? If you don't think you see the dimension, then Maybe you have to subtract uh, something from something else to get there. And then the last one is here. Again, some part in millimeters, um, given a set of holes. Um, and you need to draw all these. Just like the example that we did at the very beginning, right, where it's just playing around with stuff, there's no angles given for these two uh, lines here. right? So you just have to make sure that you get the, the correct lengths. Any questions about these three? Um, so I want you, once you're done, to hand in um, a PDF, a single PDF that has the three either screenshots or, or direct uh, PDF grabs uh, together in one, and then the three IPT files that you'll get, get out of this. Any questions? So the three PDFs and the three like files of the program. Right. But I'd like to have those three PDFs combined into one PDF. Okay. Right. Just because it's means I have to not open 30 PDFs, but just 10 PDFs. Makes my grading a little easier. No questions. Very good. Then I'll I'll let you guys work. Everybody has inventor running, right? Not hearing any complaints. I'm assuming that's correct. Um, um, I'm finished. 